Hi, in this video, I'm going to be answering an email I received from a viewer. As always, if you have any advice for this person, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Remember, when you leave constructive comments, it does help other people. I have not read this email yet, so this is gonna be a fun one for me. Okay, I'm gonna pull it up. It's a bit of a long email, but it looks really interesting. The person's name is Leandro, and the subject is, I would like to have your opinion on this. Hey, Math Sorcerer, I follow your channel on YouTube. It happened, man. My Calculus 2 professor is a problem. We were going to have four exams along the semester. Just one left now. I got 9.5 on both the first and second exam out of 10. On the third one, a 7.1. It was about series, and the professor gave me zero on a question worth two just because I obtained the Taylor series for a function by using a similar base Taylor series instead of taking derivatives. I got the answer right doing it my way and zero was my reward. I argued with him by email with no success. I must say that he is a lazy person. He did not make a single online class. He expressly said at the beginning of the semester that all of his online meetings were meant to answer questions only. How are we studying? Well, he puts links for classes of other professors on YouTube and tells us which chapters, sections of the book we must read. For Infinite Series, it was the whole chapter nine of Anton's book which I studied carefully. Together with my exams three grade, he sent a message accusing me of using methods not covered by his course. How was the method not covered if he said the whole chapter nine? Using base Taylor series to obtain others is right over there in the last section. I don't know, man, he broke my legs. I can drop calculus to any time with no penalty and do it next semester with another professor if I want to. At the start, I got three courses, Calc 2, Linear Algebra, and Introduction to Programming with C. I dropped linear algebra to dedicate more time to calculus 2 because I wanted an A. I was also working with another professor on a dissertation proposal for a master's degree in philosophy. And I decided to let that to next year because I am studying math for 12 hours a day. As you see, I've made some sacrifices just because calculus 2. Now I just don't have any will to keep doing it. I like the next last topic though. It's about multivariable functions, but I can't stand that guy. What would you do in his place and in my place? I have a bachelor's degree in philosophy and I'm unemployed since I finished that graduation in 2013. By 2016, after innumerable unsuccessful job interviews, I decided to do mathematics so maybe I can have some skill to sell. So I taught myself all the math from basic school to pre-calculus. It took me three more years and by 2019 I managed to get into college again for a pure math course. I was forced to lock the course during 2019 though and it actually started in 2020. After one week studying, the college closed because of the pandemic, and they had no clue what to do by that time. Online classes started only again after July 2020. We are now at the end of what would be the second semester with online classes. I will be 38 years old next July. I have a daughter that is four years old. My wife is the only one with a stable income from her job. She has a degree in pedagogy, but she couldn't land a job on her field. She is unhappy. And I am the very definition of a loser. And a bigger problem is that it will take many years from now just to finish my math graduation. I can make some money if I get paid, if I get into a paid scholarship, but that isn't guaranteed to happen. So I'm in this awful situation. And from my point of view, I have three possibilities. One, keep doing math, hope for a scholarship. My PhD wouldn't come before my 50th birthday. Two, try the master's degree in philosophy. If successful, it would only take me two years to finish. And I can try the doctorate degree after that. And I can even keep on studying my math course, one class each semester, while dedicating more time to philosophy. Problem is that having a degree in humanities, even with a PhD, doesn't make it any easier to find a job. Three, suicide. Sorry for bothering you with my personal problems. I know you're no psychologist, but your videos are so motivational. So I'd be glad to know what you would do in my place. What would you tell someone in the same situation as I am? Okay, wow, wow, what an email. I just, I mean, just wish I had a glass of water here. That was a lot to read. So I just feel for you. So first, let's address the first issue, uh, which you mentioned about the question that you feel that you were wronged in. So you had a question that was worth two points. You got a zero because um, you obtained a Taylor series for the function using a similar base series. I know exactly what you're talking about. And if anyone doesn't know, what he's talking about is a lot of times you're asked to find a Taylor series which is a topic that comes up in Calc 2 in the series section, usually near the end of the semester. And to use, to find Taylor series, normally 
uh, doing it the long way, okay, is to use the definition of Taylor series, which is basically uh, an infinite sum and the coefficients of the Taylor series involve the nth derivative of the function. I'm getting goosebumps, it's so beautiful. In any case, it's a very long and messy process for a certain series, especially if you have to find a pattern. So what you can do is, an easier way to do it, is use a known Taylor series, oftentimes a known Maclaurin series. For example, the Maclaurin series for e to the x, sine x, and cosine x are known. And so if you have like, what's the Taylor series centered at zero for e to the x squared, you can use the Maclaurin series for that to do that. In any case, I won't get into the details, but it's easier to do it the way he did it. So the real issue is here, did he, did he specifically say use the definition of Taylor series? Because this is something that I personally ask my calc to students to do on their exams sometimes, most of the time. And I specifically say use the definition um, when I don't want them to use the definition or I don't care. In fact, I prefer they don't because it's harder. I'll just say find the Maclaurin series, you know, using any method. But if he didn't say specifically use the definition, then I do think he is in the wrong. And unfortunately, you know, if he's he's emailed you accusing you, I think that's very, very unprofessional. Um, so that's that's a minus one on his part for it not being professional. Um, but I hate to say it, but that's life. You know, it happens in college. It happens in life. You just run into people that aren't so nice. One of the things that I used to do when I was in college and I was in a class and I felt like the professor didn't like me and this happened a lot is I would just tell myself, you know what, it doesn't matter, man. Like, it doesn't matter, you know, what the professor thinks about me because I'm going to do my best. The bad part is, like, you're in a situation now where you're penalized. And again, I don't really know if he's in the right or wrong because I don't know if he said use the definition. But the fact he's accusing you is, is kind of a low blow. Um, as for your personal, um, your, your personal, um, you know, situation here, with like, you know, you have a four-year-old, you're married, um, you're 38, you're going back for your second degree. It's really tough, you know? You just have to ask yourself, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? You know, like, so like, let's say you were to wake up tomorrow morning, right? What do you want to do for work? What is it you want to do? If you want to go teach and do research, then definitely continue down the mathematics path and don't let this one bad situation, don't let this... I'm assuming he's a guy or a girl. He didn't say it, but don't let your professor, don't let this person ruin it for you, right? You're bigger than that. So even though you were wronged on this question, perhaps, again, I don't know. I don't know what the direction said. Let's pretend you were. So even though you were wronged, don't let it bring you down, right? You got to rise above that. And you have a wife, you have a family. You can do it. I mean, you went back to math after your, your philosophy degree. I think you like math. You read the entire chapter nine of Anton's book. I think that shows you have some tenacity, determination, and love of mathematics. You self-taught yourself for years to get back at this point. Um, I think just do some deep reflection, right? Where do you want to be in five years? You talk about your PhD not coming before your 50th birthday. I guess it's because you're also working. Uh, and oh, it says, well, your wife is the only one with a stable income from her job. So uh, if you're not working, can you take more classes? Also, PhD programs are paid. So let's say you finish your bachelor's in math and you get into PhD programs somewhere, and you probably will. Like if you're not super picky about schools, you'll get in somewhere. They are funded. You'll get a salary. It's not a ton of money, but you'll get health insurance and you'll get a salary and they'll pay your tuition. So if that's what you want to do, do it, right? If you want to pursue math, do it. Math is a journey. It's a lifelong journey. Um, that's my advice. Find out what you want to do every day. And it sounds like math is what you want to do. So don't let this bad experience ruin it. And the truth is, you're probably going to have other bad experiences and me, you want to use this one as a learning experience so that when it happens again, you're prepared and you're like, oh yeah, I had this happen once. I mean, it's happened to me, you know, I've had experiences where I've been wronged, I feel, on my grades and I still remember them, but it's just life. Good luck. If anyone has any advice for Leandro, I love this email. It was great. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. Take care.